I'm so excited to meet you, Amy. Thank you so much. I've been a student of yours for years and I just love everything that you do. Um, and I couldn't wait to chat with you today because I wanna hear all about your brand new book, Two Weeks Notice, um, and why you decided to write it. Because I know so many folks in my community are so eager to follow their dreams, but they just need a little guidance. Um, and I know you're super busy, so let's dive in. Um, so how did you know that your corporate career like wasn't cutting it for you? And did you feel actually like ready to quit or you know, what were some of those first steps that, that you used to create that exit strategy for yourself? So I'll answer that one question first. I was not ready to quit. I was terrified. And I think most people are going to feel very, very nervous all the way up to quitting and maybe even through their first year of business. So mm -hmm. I don't think that fear or nervousness goes away. But here's the thing, I have been in corporate all my life. So I have always been a really good employee. I loved uh, being told what to do so I knew what direction I was going. And then I loved to excel and get the promotions and the Atta girls and really just uh, move up the corporate ladder. I was good at that. And so I was comfortable and safe in my nine to five job. And then what happened, and I, I talk about this early on in the book, I was in a meeting with a bunch of business owners that uh, were doing business online. Tony, I worked for Tony Robbins for many, many years, and Tony had brought these guys in to talk about their businesses. I was brought in to take notes, which is very humbling. And so I was at a side table taking notes and these guys started to talk about being their own bosses and building their own businesses. And in that moment, I thought, I don't know what these guys are doing. And they were from all walks of life, real estate, investing, relationship building, all this other different stuff. And I thought, I don't know what they're doing, but I have to have a piece of that because all I heard was freedom. They were working when they wanted, where they wanted, how they wanted. And I knew that from the get go, I was always on someone else's time and someone else's dime. So it was in that moment at my very last nine to five job 14 years ago that I thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I gotta figure this out. I never thought about being an entrepreneur. I never thought I was cut out to be a business owner. But when I realized I was never really free and I wanted that freedom more than anything, I had to figure it out. So what I teach in the book and what I did is for the next year, I started to decide what would this look like? What might I do? How might I go about this? So what I did is about six months before I was ready to leave, I put the exit date on a post-it note. And this makes all the difference. It's a little thing that goes a long way. I wrote down the date, put it on a mirror where I would see it every day getting ready. And I wouldn't just look at the date, but I would ask this question, what do I need to do every single day to get me closer to that date? So today, what do I need to do? Do I need to make a phone call, network with someone, read a book, listen to a podcast, buy a digital course? What will get me closer to being ready for that date? And then from there, I started to look at my financial situation because money anxiety is a very big deal for when you're leaving a, a comfortable job and then going out on your own where it's no longer guaranteed. And so I had to look at my finances and think, okay, for the next year, when I go out on my own, how much money do I really need to make? Where can I sacrifice? Where can I pull back? Because you're not living in a lap of luxury your first year as an entrepreneur. So I had to get really clear on how much money I really needed to make and then figure out, well, how might I do that? So those were two really big steps I took, the post-it note strategy and looking at my finances to get clear because I needed to make as little money as possible to give me wiggle room to make all the mistakes that first year as an entrepreneur. So those were two things that helped me immensely. I love that so much. And it's funny because I was just going to ask about the money anxiety thing yeah, um, because I, yeah, that was a huge thing for me. I too did not ever think of having my own business or think of myself as an entrepreneur, but it kind of just headed that way because of many things that I just was like, I'm just going to do this, but how am I going to do this? And, you know, could you just expand on that a little bit for folks who maybe you know, they're scared to quit just because they don't think that they're going to earn enough to support themselves or support them, fa their families. You know, what are some mindset shifts we can do? Or, you know, how, how do you suggest they kind of start to tackle that? 
Yes. Okay. So it's very real. First of all, we have to normalize the anxiety around money because again, you're going from something that is guaranteed every other week you're getting a paycheck to something that's not. And you got to put food on the table. You got to pay your rent, mortgage, whatever it might be. So it is important that you make money right out of the gate. So a few things. My goal was to save a bunch of money as a big cushion before I went out on my own. That did not happen. I ended up quitting my job around the last recession. So it wasn't like money was like pouring in from all different ways. So I did not have a big nest egg, but I will tell you when you start an online business, the overhead is so low, it's likely just you working from your home that you definitely do not need to save a bunch of money before you go out on your own. And if you tell yourself you've got to save a bunch of money, you likely will never do it. So be careful with that one. But one of the mindset shifts that I think is important is asking yourself if you're willing to get uncomfortable because the only place you grow is in the uncomfortable situations and settings that you put yourself in. When you're cozy and comfortable, you are not going to make big changes. And so looking at your regular paycheck, knowing that keeps you safe and comfortable, asking yourself, am I willing to take risks and get uncomfortable because what I want is so worth it? So that goes back to one of the mindset shifts you have to make is getting clear on your why. Why do you want it? Why is this important to you? When I realized freedom was more important to me than I've ever realized before, and when I realized I no longer wanted a boss, that became more important than my worries, than my anxiety of making it happen. So get really clear on what you want and why you want it, because on the days that your worries will knock you down, your why is going to pick you back up. So we need to get clear on that why. And then to get a little bit more tactical, start a side hustle. Everything I teach in my book, Two Weeks Notice, can be applied to a side hustle that you eventually turn to a full-time thing. So start a side hustle in the mornings, the nights, the weekends, when you're not at your nine to five job, where you can start bringing in a little money. So for example, what I did is, I started doing social media for small businesses. This is one of my areas of expertise at the time. And so I took a few clients. I think I had two clients at the time just to bring in a little money, which gives you a little confidence that when you do go out on your own, you can get going. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'll say is that a starter idea is good enough. So the, the first thing you offer as let's say a side hustle is not going to be your end all be all. I do nothing like today like I did in my first year of business. My business looks dramatically different, but I would never have a multi-million dollar business unless I started before I was ready. I had to start before I was ready. And I think that's a really important theme throughout the book. I love that so much. And I'm actually trying to practice what I preach with that <laughs> topic too, yeah. um, this, this year, especially, um, you know, just trying to just do it scared, just get it out there. Um, so I really love that advice. And actually, when you were talking about, you know, um, I knew I didn't want to have a boss anymore. There's a part in the book where you talk about what happened at your friend's wedding. Yes. Um, with Wi-Fi. Could you just share that yes. story? <laughs> Let's talk about that. So uh, when I was still in my nine to five job, I was working on this really big project with this really big deadline. And unfortunately it fell right around the time that my best friend was getting married. And she was getting married in this sleepy Northern California town where Wi-Fi was almost non-existent. And the only place I could find it was little cafes. And so during her wedding week, I was literally sneaking away with my laptop, going to these little cafes, hiding in the back, hoping no one from the wedding party would see me. And I was like pounding away, working away on this project. And so I thought, okay, as long as the bride doesn't know, and I'm going to steal away hour here, hour there, I'm going to just get this project done. I was so stressed that entire wedding. So when we got to the night of the wedding and I was cheersing the bride with some champagne, she said to me, all you do is work. And I realized, Oh my gosh, I thought no one could see how frantic or crazy I was acting, but it was very clear to everybody the whole weekend. And it was embarrassing that she said that, but also I realized, yeah, I'm doing this all for somebody else. So I'm building somebody else's empire, not present in my life, working every hour, every night, every weekend. I don't want a life like this. Mm -hmm. So it was like a little bit of a kink in my armor in that moment when I realized this isn't the life I want. And so that's kind of where it started 
to, I started to think like, what kind of lifestyle would I want if I ever went out on my own? Which is a great question to ask yourself. Do you wanna be able to pick your kids up at three o'clock from school? Do you want to make sure that your weekends are all of yours? And do you wanna take more vacations? Like, let's start dreaming about the lifestyle you want so you could build a business around that. I love that. Absolutely. Like, and that's something too, that I think we should revisit, you know, as we're going through running our business, like, you know, what do we add to our why? How does our why shift and change and how can we meet that? Um, And when you think about that question, what's the biggest difference that you see, um, you know, between working for yourself and working for someone else? And what do your days look like now? Like, how are you able to enjoy, you know, all the, all the stuff you're doing, you know, all the hard work that you put in? You know, what I'll say is the first few years of building my business versus where I'm at today looked very different. So I I don't like to sugarcoat anything. And I'll say, when you leave your nine to five job officially, and that first year you're out on your own, you're likely working more hours than you want. Like my first year, I looked around and thought, I thought I was working a lot for Tony Robbins. I'm I'm harder on myself than Tony ever was on me. So I started to work way too much in the beginning and had to scale it back when I started to realize this could be a recipe for burnout. So in your first year, be very careful of not working your life away because this business will become your baby. It's just how it always works out. But how do how does my time look today? So I always make sure that I'm in my zone of genius and everyone's got a zone of genius. So what that means is I am creating content. I'm front stage. So front stage, backstage, front stage is right now. I'm on an interview with you. I'm the only one in my company that could be doing this type of interview. So this is where I should be spending my time. Whereas Mm -hmm. in the back end of the business, I'll meet with my team. I'll answer a bunch of questions they have so they can get their job done. Um, I'll make videos for social media. I'll do live trainings for my students who are in my programs. There's a lot of meeting with other people on my team and a lot of front facing content creation that I do. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how I spend a lot of my time. And I have a small team that works with me, full-time team. Actually, most people just starting out wouldn't feel like it's small. I have 20 people on my team. (laughs) But remember, I started out with just me. For the first year, it was just me. Then I got a five hour a week virtual assistant that I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to pay her or what was I going to give her to do. Very normal feelings. And then I just started to grow slowly but surely. 14 years in, I have a bigger team, but it all started with just me. So anyone just starting out, it's just you. And that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I, oh, I got yeah, one more no. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I always say when people ask me, what's it like to work for someone versus work for yourself, the big differences. And I always say the worst day as an entrepreneur, like I talk about some horrible things that I've that have happened along the way in building this business. I almost lost this business at one point. I talk about it in the book, but Mm -hmm. the worst day as an entrepreneur is still better than the best day in your nine to five job because you're free. Right. Would you agree? Yeah, so yeah. true. And, and just to go back, you know, when you were saying about overworking in the beginning, yeah. that was definitely me, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing, you know, <laughs> and, and eager to please and wanting to prove myself and all of that stuff. And I think it kind of ties in with, um, what a lot of my audience talks about with confidence and worrying about what other people think. And I think there's a great example um, in the book where you talk with your friend, Jasmine Starr, who is also awesome. Um, And she gave you a very interesting piece of advice based on some feedback you got. Could you just tell about what happened there? Yes. So I am a constant people pleaser, something I try to work on every single day. And I want everybody on the internet to like me. And that is impossible. But in the beginning, I really thought it was possible. So I would water down my messaging to not be so polarizing. I would kind of not make my opinion so strong so that I wouldn't ruffle any feathers. And then I realized my message is getting lost in the sea of noise online because I don't put a stake in the ground. I don't, people don't even know what I'm known for or what I stand for. And so then I started to get stronger in, this is how you do it. Like how you build a business, this is what you do first, this is what you do second. Not everyone's gonna agree with me, but I've seen proof that this works. And at one point I put something out on social and this guy, 
He did not agree with what I had to say. And he was very vocal how I was dead wrong. And then other people started piping in and I thought, holy cow, what's happening? It freaked me out. So I call up my friend Jasmine. I'm like, these people are attacking me online. And I told her what happened and she starts to laugh. And that's when she said, you ain't for everyone, boo. This is, you're not Santa Claus. You're not gonna make everybody happy. And so she said, you have to be able to be okay with that. And then she followed it up with something so valuable that I actually don't even think I included in the book. She said, if they ain't paying the bills, they don't get an opinion on your business. And that was a big one for me because it's so true. These people, these strangers on the internet who have opinions about what you should and should not do likely aren't running their own businesses and they definitely aren't paying your bills. And I was, I was on TikTok not long ago and this really wise woman said something that I totally agree with. She said, anyone more successful than you will not be tearing you down online. It just doesn't happen like that. So consider the source when someone says something about you online, they're likely not even at the level you're at. So we're just going to ignore it and move on. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Such great advice. Oh man, my, my audience is just going to freak out about this chat. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and tips with us. I can't wait for everyone to read this book. Oh, and thank, thank you. you so much for writing it and for, you know, pouring your, your heart into it as you do with everything. Um, and I'm so excited to follow where everyone goes now after reading this. I am so um, excited. I am so excited too. You know, I wrote the book because... This is the book that I wish I had 14 years ago when I was starting out on my own. You and I both know there's a lot of unknowns as you navigate being your own boss. And there's lots of mistakes that we make along the way. And I can't take away all the mistakes that everyone's gonna make because that's just human nature, but I can definitely help you sidestep some of the biggest ones, the unknowns, like you don't know what you don't know. And this book is gonna show you the way. Not only am I gonna give you the courage to leave behind what is no longer serving you, I'm gonna give you a roadmap, step by step by step, how to build a strong foundation for an online business so that you know exactly what you need to do to get it done. So thank you so much for having me. I really do believe this book could change lives. And uh, it's twoweeksnoticebook.com. That's where you go to get all the details. Amazing. And I'll have it linked everywhere so everyone can check it out. And Amy, thank you so, so, so much. You are the best. Oh, so glad to be here. (laughs) Thank you, friend. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.